it's Colette here from the Speech Meadow and I'm going to talk today again about visuals. So first visual, first video I talked about like what are visuals, so they're basically pictures or words or objects that kids use to help them function more successfully in the activities that they're doing. Um, I sort of talked about who benefits from visuals and so now I'm going to kind of talk about a little bit more specifically when when to use them or basically when to use them. So the first thing is, and I talked a little bit about last video, those kids who don't ever appear to be listening. So um, you can use them with those students for sure. And again, I would say for everybody. Um, they're really good when you are teaching or reinforcing a new skill. So, for example, at the beginning of the school year, we focused a lot on teaching kids how to wash their hands, um, how to wash their hands properly. And so, um, basically, any bathroom you went to um, would have some sort of visual teaching them the steps on, on how to wash their hands. And if you went into the bathroom, um, the staff bathroom that's in the bathrooms in the school, you also saw one set up for the adults to remind them to A, wash their hands, B, wash their hands for a certain amount of time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they're also really good for, visuals are really good for reminding students about activities, duties, or equipment that they need. So for example, every morning they need to bring out their, their paper, their notebook, um, whatever you have a visual out for them and it just you're so then you're again not having to remind students all the time do you have this do you have this do you have this um teaching the students to look there to see what they need for that part of the day um you know reminding kids that you need to hand in your library books or your reading log or whatever and that um, it gets used a lot for um, reinforcing rules and expectations. So, you know, you know, in the library, for example, you, you see the quiet sign because the expectation in the library is that you're not yelling um, and you're not moving around a lot. And so you'll, you'll see those visuals out like, shh. Um, or a lot of times in, in classes, you'll sort of see, you know, um, some sort of visual where it says um, zero, one, two, three. So zero is no talking whatsoever. One is, you know, whispering. Two is a normal voice. Three, you're allowed to be loud and and that. And so you'll see, and so, so the teachers will give you the expectation of what your voices need to be doing. Or quite often you'll see pictures on reminding kids on how to listen in a group. So you need to have your, you know, you need eyes need to be watching, your hands need to be on your lap. Um, you need to be looking at the, the teacher, those types of visuals. Um, another one that's really helpful um, are visuals to help kids make choices. Um, choice Making choices can be really hard for a lot of kids for a lot of reasons. And so giving them a picture of what their choices are, A, shows them what choices they have, um, B, it'll also sort of give them a nonverbal way of, of choosing. And again, you'll see this for individual students. Um, quite often, it, you'll see this at centers, especially in kindergarten and grade one, you tend to see it a bit more where they'll have the activities, um, visuals of what activities are gonna happen, and the kids have to put either their name or pick their picture in the slots that correspond with that. So A, the teacher knows who's all supposed to be at that center. Um, the students know A, what centers are available, and B, where they need to go, and C, the, again, they know what's, what are their choices, so that if you're in a kindergarten classroom, um, and Lego isn't a choice, the kids know that they can't go and pull the Lego out. Um, the other one that's really important is sort of your schedules to knowing about your day. Um, 
this just kind of sets kids up to remind them what they're going to do that day. It's really good for those times when um, the schedule isn't going to look like it normally does um, to kind of prepare all the kids um, for that and particularly those kids that don't like change. So knowing about their day is a, is a really good visual to have. Um, the other one that, um, that visuals are really good for is teaching transitions and to helping kids through transitions. So uh, moving from one activity to another, moving from one part of the building to another can be really challenging. And so having some sort of visual for them to help them through that transition can really help those kids through those transitions. So let me know if you use um, visuals for any other sort of big reason and um, or if you have any questions or comments. Anyways, I will talk to you soon. Bye.